Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about three benefits of naked options. So if you're brand new to this show, this is a show where we take concepts, we break them down, and we usually construct them visually for you. So lately, if you've been tuning in, you may have noticed that I've been sticking to this sort of list of three things. So we've talked about three reasons why rolling defined risk is hard. We've talked about three adjustments for covered calls, three adjustments for naked puts. So we've got a lot of lists out there and we made another one today with three benefits of naked options. So we're gonna look at some of the reasons why we like to trade naked options, not only from a profit perspective, but also from just a trading perspective in general. So let's get right into it and I'm gonna break down the three for you right here. So for me, the three most important benefits of naked options options are listed here. So first and foremost is getting filled. So when we're looking at entering into a trade, we're going to be able to get filled on one option much easier than with four or three or two legs in a trade. We're gonna get a little bit more into that. We're also gonna talk about capturing profits. So we're gonna look at Vega and Delta and how these things are going for us when we're selling premium and how it's easier to capture profits with a naked option when we compare it to a spread. And lastly, we're gonna talk about management opportunities. So one of the most important things when we're trading is being able to turn our losers into winners or turning our losers into scratches. And when we're dealing with naked options, it's much easier to do that than we're dealing with spreads. So let's get right into getting filled on the next slide and we'll talk about how it's easier to get filled with one contract rather than something else. So as you can see, I've got two different trades here. So on the very top, we're looking at selling a put where you can clearly see our profit potential is off to the right here. When we're selling a put, we want this to expire out of the money. So if we sell a put that's already out of the money or below the stock price as you see it here, then our profit potential is going to be above that price and anywhere above that range is going to be max profit. But when we're looking at profit and getting filled, when we look at one contract and compare it to four, it's going to be a big difference. So let's say that We've got one contract here and we know it's liquid. We looked at the strike. We looked at the volume and open interest in that strike and we're getting about a thousand open interest and let's say maybe 800 to a thousand volume for the day. So that's a pretty liquid strike. We should be able to get in and out of that strike pretty quickly and easily. So if we're looking at just one contract and we know it's liquid, I'm going to be get, able to get in and out of that trade. If I'm routing it for a fair market price, and let's say I'm selling this put, I'm able to get filled pretty instantly, and maybe tomorrow or the next day, the stock price had a big rally, and I was able to capture 50% of profit, so I went to go close it. Well, if I went into this trade knowing that it's liquid, and it stayed liquid throughout the life cycle that I was holding this short put, if I was going to close that trade at a fair price, I should be able to get pr filled pretty quickly, if not instantly. So when we look at selling naked options and just selling one contract or one leg trades, we're going, to be get, we're going to get filled at a much faster rate and much easier rate than if we have multiple legs. So let's say we've got an iron condor here where an iron condor is simply selling a call spread and selling a put spread at the same time, which creates a profit range. So it is a different trade, but now we're looking at four legs here as opposed to one. So we're selling a call, we're buying a call, we're selling a put and we're buying a put. So that's a four-legged trade. Now, let's say that we looked into this trade, we looked at each of the contracts and each of the strikes, and we found that we had four contracts, but only three of them were liquid. So let's say the short call had nice liquidity, the short put had great liquidity, and the long put that's even further out of the money had nice liquidity. But let's say that this long call right here did not have it wasn't very liquid, it didn't have a lot of activity, there wasn't very much volume or int open interest in that contract. So what would happen? If I were to route this order, regardless of the liquidity of these strikes, if I've got one strike that's illiquid and maybe not trading, or I'm not able to get that price that I'm looking for, so maybe the market maker can find a price that would benefit me here, also here, and on that long put, but I can't seem to get filled on that long call, it's not going to fill the trade. In no situation where would I be filled on the short call, the short put, and the long put, if I'm routing this iron condor, the trade will not be filled until all four legs are accounted for. So what's really important is that 
if I'm going to trade a multi-legged trade like this, I need to make sure that each and every leg of that trade is liquid. Because if one of them is not, regardless of the price that I'm trading it at, let's say I'm routing this iron condor to be sold at $1, and the market is trading at 102. You might say, wow, the market is, has a better price than what I'm actually trading for. Why am I not getting filled? Well, if one of these options, regardless of which one it is, is not being traded or is not liquid, that trade's not going to go through. So what's really important is to make sure that each leg that we're trading, if we do go with defined risk, is liquid. But the biggest takeaway from this slide is that getting filled is going to be much easier when we are dealing with naked options or just one-legged trades because we're able to easily select that strike. And if that strike is liquid and we have a good price that we're putting in, we're going to get filled pretty quickly and easily. So let's look at another aspect of naked options, and that would be on the next slide where we're talking about capturing profits. So let's say we had that same exact trade, except we removed that short call spread from that iron condor. So now we've got pretty much the same trade, except we've got a short put here, which is naked, and we've got a short put spread down here, which is defined, so it's no longer naked. So basically what I have is a similar risk profile. Of course, my naked put is going to give me a higher profit potential than my short put spread, and that's because I'm collecting a higher credit. So let's say I'm collecting $1.50 for my short put. And at the same time, I could define my risk by purchasing an out of the money put, as you see there, and doing so would net me a $1 credit. So if I'm selling that same out of the money put for $1.50, but I have to pay 50 cents to purchase that farther out of the money put to define my risk. The difference between these two, a $1.50 credit and a 50 cent debit, is going to give me that net credit of $1. So when we're talking about capturing profits, let's just talk about Vega and Delta. So if you're not familiar with these terms, they are essentially two of the Greek terms we like to look at when we're looking at metrics of our options. So delta is going to be the change of our options price given a $1 increase or decrease in the underlying price. And vega is going to be the rate of change of our options price giving a 1% increase or decrease in the implied volatility of the underlying. So basically, we're looking at a short vega exposure with short options because if we're selling an option here and implied volatility decreases, that's basically signifying that the option prices have decreased. So if I sold it here and I can buy it back for a lower amount, that's going to be profitable. So when we're selling premium, we're going to have negative vega associated with that. In this particular trade, selling a put is a bullish strategy. So we have short vega from selling the put and we have positive delta from selling the put as well. So let's talk about the difference between these two spreads right here. So number one, I'm going to have more vega exposure from my short put than I would have with my put spread. And that's because if I know that short vega is associated with a short put and uh, positive vega would be associated with a long put, then I know that just like this, where if I'm, cap if I'm capping my losses here by purchasing this out of the money put, I'm also capping the amount of profit I can make. If I have less vega exposure with this spread than I would on that short put, a 1% decrease in implied volatility would result in less profit on this spread than on this spread. Because again, if I'm short vega and volatility goes down, if I have less vega exposure with this spread than I would with this naked option, it's, going to, it's not going to allow me to capture that vega profitability if implied volatility ends up going down. Same with delta. So let's say delta, we've got, let's say we've got a delta of maybe 40 for this short put that's out of the money. You're gonna see deltas be around 50 for at the money strikes. So let's say I'm out of the money, I've got about a 40 delta. So that means that if this price goes up $1, my option should decrease by 40 cents. So basically we want, since the platform's gonna know that we're selling premium and we want that, profit, that uh, put price to go down in order to be profitable, it's going to assign us a positive delta for this experience. So if the stock price goes up $1, let's say I've got a 40 delta here, but only a 30 delta here. So that means that if the price of the stock goes up $1 in this example, I should stand to make 40 cents or $40. 
But in this example, since I'm basically hedging my long delta by that long put, so indirectly I'm hedging my delta because I'm reducing that long delta exposure from the short put by purchasing a further out of the money long put, which actually has a negative delta. So if I've got a positive delta with my short put and a slightly lower negative delta from my long put, I'm going to have less delta exposure in this trade than in this one. So let's say I've got a 30 delta spread with this spread here compared to my 40 delta put. So if the stock price ends up going up, I should make about $40 here, but I would only make about $30 here. So in terms of capturing profits, if our trade does go our way, so with Vega, we want volatility to decrease when we're selling premium. And if we have positive delta, we want the stock price to go up. But if I have less Vega exposure with my spread and less delta exposure with my spread, then yes, it's gonna be much harder to capture those profits quickly when we compare this spread to this short option here. So let's go on to the next, next slide and we'll talk about one of the most important aspects, which is management. So a lot of times we know exactly how to put on a trade, but it is pretty hard to determine when I should roll or what I can do when I want to roll, etc. It is one of the more gray experiences when we're trading. So putting on a trade, it's a lot more black and white. We can say, okay, if implied volatility is here and I know I want this specific delta, I can deploy this strategy. But since we're going into the unknown, we don't really know what's going to happen after that, it can be difficult to know what we're doing when we're adjusting. But just talking about adjusting itself, an easy credit can be obtained if I just have a short put. So let's say I sold that put out of the money previously, so let's say the stock price was here, and now all of a sudden the stock price dropped below my short put. Well, what would I have to do to roll that? Well, basically what I'd have to do is I'd have to purchase my short put that I had and sell another one out further out in time. So let's talk about time value of contracts. Think about car insurance, for example. If I'm only insuring my car for one month, the premium associated with that one month insurance policy is going to be less than if I wanted to insure my car for three months. That's just the way of the world. And the same is true with options. So if I've got a naked option and I can buy it back for let's say a March contract and I can sell out an April contract for the same exact strike, that April contract is going to have more value than the March contract. It wouldn't make sense for the March contract to be more valuable than the April contract. So for that reason, I'm able to get an easy credit. So let's say I had the same assumption and the stock price went below my short put, which is never a good thing, but let's say that I was still bullish and I didn't want to trade, change my assumption, totally comfortable holding the trade. What I can do if I have this naked put is just continually roll that out in time if I have the ability to hold it. So I'm able to easily get a credit for that since I would be buying back my short option in March for a loss. I could still deploy that April option for a higher price than that cost of me buying back the option. So I would e easily be able to get a net credit. But if I had defined risk, it's much harder. It's actually almost impossible to obtain a credit with the same strikes if my spread is totally breached. So if the stock price is actually further down below than my long put and my short put, I'm not going to be able to get a credit if I rolled these exact same strikes out in time just like this one because at the end of the day, yes, my April short put would be worth more, but so would my April long put that I would have to purchase. So getting a credit is much, much harder when we're talking about defined risk rather than comparing it to naked options here. So management opportunities are endless with naked options where they are very limited with defined risk. So let's wrap it all together with some takeaways for you. The very first takeaway is that a naked option holds more risk, sure, but they do have a lot of benefits. As we talked about, capturing profits and having management opportunities and just being able to get all that information there and getting filled especially is going to be much easier and much more beneficial when we're looking at naked options. Secondly, getting filled easily is key. If I can get into a trade, maybe it's a four-legged iron condor, 
and let's say I'm profitable on that trade, but I can't get out of the trade, that's a problem for me. So if I have the ability to trade naked options versus defined risk, of course not everyone does, and maybe not everyone would want to, but if I have the ability to, I am going to lean towards the naked option route personally because I know that it's going to be easier for me to get filled when I compare it to a four-legged trade like an iron condor. Secondly, and lastly, the biggest benefit of naked options for me is the management opportunities. If we can turn our losers, which we're going to have when we're probability trading, into winners or scratches, that's gonna be key, and it's gonna be key on our P&L overall. And if I have endless opportunities with naked options, but I have very limited opportunities with defined risk, personally, I'm going to stray more towards that naked option strategy compared to that defined risk because I want to be able to have that management opportunity. Again, it does boil down to your risk profile and your account size and everything like that, but if I've got the ability to do so, because of these benefits of Naked Options, I would go with the Naked Option personally. So thanks for tuning in. This has been three benefits of Naked Options. If you've got any questions or feedback, shoot it over to support at doe.com, support at or you can shoot me a tweet at Doe Trader Mike. We've got Jim Schultz though coming up next with From Theory to Practice, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our video. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up or share it with a friend. Click below to watch more videos, subscribe to our channel, or go to our website.